Hey everyone, welcome back to Mama's Orchids and Backyard. Today we are going to tour the San Diego Zoo Orchid Greenhouse and then we're going to take a glimpse of the carnivorous plant greenhouse also. So stick around. I was in San Diego a couple of weeks ago and saw so many interesting things I wanted to share with you, one of which was the visit to San Diego Zoo. So obviously most people come to the zoo to see animals, but if they took a look around, uh, they will see the massive diverse plants that are available here at San Diego Zoo. Now I can't take credit for noticing that. I sat on a double-decker bus tour first thing when I got to the zoo and I lucked out. I got a really knowledgeable tour guide that appreciated plant life so much that she pointed all those things out about the zoo. So I started taking pictures. When I got to the greenhouse, I was able to do a short interview off camera with the person that takes care of the orchids and his name is Heinfried, H-E-I-N-F-R-I-E-D is how you spell it. I think it's a German name. So from Heinfried, I learned that all the orchids from San Diego zoos are acquired by, um, confiscated at the airport um, from people who have um, taken them from the wild. I'm assuming at the local San Diego airport is where they get them. I asked if all of them were confiscated, any donated or purchased by the zoo, and he said no, um, they were all from confiscation. I was going to ask more details of that process, but I don't think he would be the right person to answer that. I do wonder, though, um, how does the authority at the customs decide uh, what is an orchid taken from the wild? I can't imagine they had a specialist that can tell just um, the difference. Or do they just confiscate all orchids? I remember once when I went to Hawaii, I brought back a couple of orchids. I unpotted them and kept them bare-rooted and had no issues at all when I came back to the mainland. I don't know the rules on bringing back plants um, into the country from other places, whether they needed a nematode-free certificate or an inspection approval certificates of some sort. So I just recently looked it up uh, rules online, and I think basically you just have to declare that you are bringing in plants, and then the, uh, they have an inspector that inspects it, if, and if they say that it's okay, then you're good to go. So I guess the inspectors, inspectors are trained to look for orchids taken from the wild, maybe by the way that the roots are wrapped around or a certain way, um, you know, or the size of the orchid. So I wonder too sometimes um, whether an uns unsuspecting orchid hobbyist may have purchased one of those <coughs> orchids from the wild uh, at a local market before hopping on the plane and uh, not knowing that it had to been taken from the wild. So who knows? I'm just really curious of the stories behind these massive specimen size orchids. The caretaker also said that all these orchids were species. So if these were taken from the wild, I would say that they none of them came with a tag. And uh, I think identifying these would be a nightmare. There's so many different types of orchids. Gosh, you'd have to be expert of experts to know how to identify these. And uh, yet I saw a lot of tags around, so I don't know how he did that or how anybody did that identifying them. And uh, the caretaker has the greenhouse set up in three different temperature zones. There's a warm area, an intermediate area, and a cool area. And there's more orchids outside of the green greenhouse that was not available for us to see. And uh, the greenhouse already were crammed with huge orchids. The temperature is so ideal to grow orchids outdoor in San Diego. It's mid-80s and 70s in the days, and then at night, 60s and 50s. And, it, um, and so there's a, uh, but it's a water shortage, though. Um, that's the only big problem they have here. Okay, so now that I've told you some of the details, I'm going to um, see if I can loop around again with all the pictures and uh, the tour and talk a little more in detail specifically about the plants. So right in front of the pathway to the greenhouse, there's a sign that says um, the greenhouse is open from 9 to 2. The zoo, however, is open from 9 to 9. Keep in mind if you're going there. 
Okay, this first plant is a, um, it looks like a, a Chinese ground orchid that's cold tolerant is um, Batilla um, strata, I believe is the botanical name. And then next you see a case of uh, some orchids that were staged right in front of the greenhouse. And here's a Cattleya. I don't know what this is. There's a lot of genera here that you'll hear me say, I don't know what this is. And this is a uh, Brassavella. And then um, there's a few trees that would have some huge mounts on the trees. I don't know what these are either. And then um, there's a wall of mounts um, right outside of the greenhouse. And then this is um, some ground orchid also. They're, they look like a reed orchid, R-E-E-D, and they're very tall. Here is um, a, um, another picture of them with the buds. Uh, the bloom buds not open yet. I wish I have uh, another picture. I think I do later on. And this is another orchid. I don't know the name of it also. Cluster bouquet. This is a Brassavola hybrid of some sort. Um, Okay, here is a better uh, wider shot of that reed orchid that we saw earlier, but this is the pink variety and it's fairly tall. I say about oh, three to four feet tall. And then we're at the uh, near the entrance of the greenhouse. Um, there's like a platform of plant stand um, with um, lots of or large orchids again. And this looks like the Engracum um, sesquipedale, the uh, Darwin's orchid. orchid. Um, this is a compact um, short dendrobium, very old one though. And then we're right into the greenhouse right now, the entrance where there's a lot of slipper orchids. Very pretty yellow one right here. And uh, right into the greenhouse in this area would be the warm section, I believe. Um, that would make sense. You have your vandas. And they look like the hybrid type. Um, I'm not sure what, you know, some of the names, and I really wish I had um, taken pictures of names for you, but I just didn't have time. This is a Bulbophyllum. Really pretty. Um, I think an Encyclia type. And I have no idea what this is. Oh, I'm sorry, it looks like a slip orchid too. I'm just taking picture of, those, of these really massive wild roots. And then this one is an African variety right here that we just went by. Just lots of varieties, honestly. And there was mostly slip orchids, lots of slip orchids in bloom actually at this time. And I don't know if they, he induced it in the, the cool zone area. You know, honestly, I don't remember seeing a bunch of spider mites or aphids or any, you know, pest around, which I'm really surprised because everything is just so chock full that you would think it's so, you know, easy to get um, pests uh, multiplying everywhere. And this looks like a Miltoniopsis, like the um, pansy orchid type. Um, I think this might be one of them too. And we're in the cool zone as you uh, walk through. I don't know what this is. Another slip of orchid right here, a yellow pale one. And then um, these are um, Oncidium types, I believe. Closer up of that. And more of the dainty little variety slip of orchids. And this, I am not sure, but it looks like a dendrobium. But the uh, flowers look like a brassavola, just the structure, the canes look like dendrobium. And this looks like an oncidium type. And a cattleyas, um, looks like a clondia almost. I don't know this one. 
and uh, outside of the greenhouse these huge tall maybe six or seven feet or even taller you see it at the top of that uh, house basically reed reed type of orchids that are in uh, potting soil and here's some more on the um, landscaping part outside of the um, greenhouse really pretty I guess the Cattleya types right here and some more mounts on top of their palm trees or Um, another Cattleya right here and uh, I really don't know this it looks like Grammatophyllum the way the flowers look and uh, you know um, throughout the zoo we would see a few areas where the landscaping was incorporated with air plants and bromeliads and uh, so let's go to the carnivorous plant greenhouse. Um, this was hard to find. Um, it took me a while to circle around that area and find it. As you can see, it's sort of nicely tucked away. Um, and uh, it was a very small greenhouse, about maybe a third of the size of the orchid greenhouse. Um, I guess I came too late to talk to anyone, though it was before 2 o'clock, I think 1.30, so they must have left early. Um, they locked everything back up, so we were only able to view from the outside. And again, just very large specimen-sized plants. I wonder if these were confiscated also. And um, I'm sorry, but I don't know um, anything about these plants. I... Um, I'm completely clueless on carnivorous plants, so I don't know much about them. I can just identify a pitcher plant, which I think anybody else can too. Well, I hope you enjoy the tours of both greenhouses. Um, the next thing we're going to see is Sunset Valley Orchid, and um, I'm looking forward to having that one um, posted and sharing with you soon. And thank you so much for joining me in this video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.